Hi guys, it's Jennifer. Welcome back to Busy Being Jen. I'm here today to talk to you about how I lost 30 pounds and kept that weight off. So I hope you'll come along with me. Be sure to subscribe and if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Thanks. I recently was asked by one of my viewers, Lisa, hi Lisa, if I would talk about how I have maintained my weight loss. So it was about three years ago when I started my weight loss journey this time, and then uh, two years since I have kept the weight off. And so, uh, yeah, I thought I would, be, I would be happy to talk about that. So in this video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell you a little bit about my journey with my struggle with weight. I'm gonna talk about what I actually did to lose weight with both eating and exercise. And then I'm going to talk about, um, at the end of the video, I'm gonna go into some very detailed information about how I ate. So if you hear this and you want, and you're saying, so, but what did you eat? Then I am going to tell you like specifics. And I'm gonna have a little chart for you and stuff that you can refer to if you want to. So those of you who just kind of wanna hear the story and then say, eh, you know, whatever, then at some point you can um, say goodbye and that's fine. But um, if you wanna hear like specifically what I ate in detail, I will tell you that toward the end of the video. So I have struggled with weight my whole adult life. I was not, I was not a chubby kid, although I felt like I was as a teenager. I grew up in the 70s graduated from high school in 1981 so I grew up in that whole era of Twiggy and you know every girl just wanted to have no curves just straight skinny thing and that's what I wanted to be and I, I don't have that kind of body and so I was never going to be that and I felt like I was fat I look back at pictures of myself when I was a teenager and I wasn't and I, I wish I hadn't tortured myself in that way but anyway, so, um, but I did, I did start to have trouble with my weight in, into my 20s. I was diagnosed with polycystic ovarian syndrome, which stems from being insulin resistant. And several years back, I had read that the average person with polycystic ovarian syndrome, which I will refer to as PCOS, um, the average person with that is 100 pounds overweight. So I never got to be 100 pounds overweight. At my highest, I was probably 40 pounds overweight, uh, but I was always on a diet. If I was not on a diet, I would gain weight. I mean, that's just the way it was. So, so I would, um, and I've tried every diet, you know, I mean, almost every diet. So I, I mean, Slim Fast, Nutrisystem, Jenny Craig, Adkins, um, South Beach diet, HCG, I was injecting myself, sticking a needle into my stomach every day and injecting this stuff into me. I've tried everything. It wasn't that diets didn't work for me. I would lose weight, but well, I would lose weight if I could stick to it, if it was some crazy, you know, some crazy diet or a diet with no carbs. I mean, there was no way I could stick with that. I love bread too much. But anyway, so I just had the hardest time though with keeping weight off. So numerous times in my life, I've lost and got to where I feel really good about myself and just, um, you know, was never able to keep the weight off. So it was in my, gosh, I guess I was in my 30s, late 30s maybe, I started doing long distance walking. And many of you who, who follow me have known about have seen my training and my races and stuff like that so i um i have done 25 half marathons and five full marathons as a walker um a fast walker i'm not i don't do that race walking thing but i just walk really fast and so i over a period of 12 years did all of those races and and while doing long distance walking didn't help me to lose weight and get skinny it actually while i was training I would maintain my weight. And so that was an encouraging thing, which is why I did it for so many years, because it really did help me to keep my weight from fluctuating all the time. Um, but still, I was never the weight I wanted to be. Um, I have never once purchased a photo from the race. You know, they have photographers all along the race course and they take pictures of you. And every single picture I ever saw of myself, I was like, uh, Oh my gosh, you know, how could I work this hard 
and do, you know, complete a full marathon, 26.2 miles, and still, you know, just not be the weight I wanted to be. And so, and I would, like, I was literally, it wasn't like when I was a kid and I thought I was fat. I mean, my BMI was in the overweight range. And so, um, it was just a, it was just a very frustrating thing. My gynecologist, who would talk to me a lot about insulin resistance and all that, used to call me an insulin resistance success story, even though uh, here I was, you know, 30, 40 pounds overweight because he was saying that, you know, most people who have this are quite a bit um, heavier than that. And so, but I, you know, I just always kept trying to work at it. So then um, about, well, several years ago, I was, I heard about a study that was being done by some researchers at the university where I was working at the time. And um, they were trying to get participants to do this diet kind of a thing. It was a few months before we were gonna be going on a cruise. I thought, well, you know, I'll just do this crazy thing for nine weeks and then I'll look good in my pictures for the cruise and that'll be that. And as I read over kind of what this was gonna be about, I, I, I just remember I looked at the, at the description and I went, oh, this is vegan. This is eating a vegan diet. And I thought, how in the world am I ever gonna do this? I love cheese too much. But I thought it would be good for me to try it, and so uh, so I participated in that. And this was pretty strict. They had a way of eating um, for us. They told us how many servings of vegetables and fruits and legumes and nuts and seeds and all that kind of stuff. We were allowed to have one serving per week of animal protein. So that meant um, an egg, um, some cheese, um, any kind of meat, whether it was beef, chicken, pork, fish, uh, whatever, just one serving per week of an animal protein and the rest of the protein that we ate was plant-based protein. So this was really fascinating for me. I learned a lot about the benefits of eating a plant-based diet. I did uh, lose, I think in the nine weeks that I participated in that study, I lost 12 or 13 pounds so so it was a decent amount of weight but it wasn't like crashing off 40 pounds in nine weeks and I also had kind of gotten to the point too where I thought you know I don't want to do something that's going to take a bunch of weight off and then I can't live with that you know and so I I was getting to the point here I was in my mid 50s and realizing that I needed to find something that was a lifestyle, a way of eating that I could live with for the rest of my life, or I was just going to keep roller coastering, and I just had no interest in that. You know, it was, I felt really good about eating that way. Cutting out cheese was not nearly as hard as I thought it would be, and because I could have it on that for that one day a week or one serving a week of an animal protein, I could have cheese, I could have a cheesy pizza. Um, whatever it it was do it became doable for me I didn't think it was going to be doable but there were a lot of things that I missed within the first couple of weeks that as I continued on became easier and easier for me to do so then after that nine weeks was over I kind of tried to keep eating that way but eventually I kind of went back to what I was eating before and I put on you know put on some weight again so um, then it, uh, it was three years ago, my husband decided he wanted to do this with me because of some of the health benefits that come along with, um, with eating a plant-based diet and his mother had just passed away and he was realizing that all the people in, on her side of the family who have died of cancer and a plant-based diet is supposed to reduce that and uh, reduce the likelihood of getting cancer or, or dying from cancer and so so he was really curious about it and so he said I think I want to do that which made it a lot easier for me so anyway when when John joined me on that and he ended up losing 27 pounds uh, he, it, it made it a lot easier for me because not only because he was doing it with me but because I knew he was doing it to prevent cancer that he you know was at a higher risk of getting because of all of his family members who have had it. And so I was really committed to kind of helping him, which made it easier for me. So over, um, so I started, this was three years ago, I started eating that way and um, just I, having meat once a week, 
but I here's the here's where we kind of tweaked it. I just don't I, I just can't live without cheese for the rest of my life. I like it too much. And so John and I still eat cheese. We just have it more like a garnish. So rather than making a pan of cheese enchiladas, I'll make vegetable enchiladas. So enchiladas that are filled with black beans and roasted vegetables and things, put some enchilada sauce on the top of it and then sprinkle it with some cheese. And and so I, I still have cheese, but I have far less than I, than I used to. And I still have my one serving of meat a week. So over the course of that next year, well, halfway through the year, I started doing bar exercise, B-A-R-R-E, and that was just a form of exercise that I fell in love with. It is such a great, I mean, in a one hour workout, it kicked my butt, and I had just finished training for a half marathon when I started doing bar, and I couldn't believe how hard it was for me. And I'd been walking, you know, miles and miles, for, um, for months training and, and this was still a really difficult workout. So I thought, you know, maybe this is, maybe this is what I should be doing. So I still do bar today. I actually went to, started out going to a studio in my town and then because of COVID, I started doing an online version of it. So I'll link it in the space below, but it's bar3.com and they have specials all the time. Right now they have a thing going where you get your first 15 days for free, and I don't get anything from this, by the way, if you sign up, there's no referral, unless you were in studio with me, but um, there was, there's, uh, the first 15 days are free, then your first month is at a reduced price, and then beyond that, your monthly price is $29, but if you sign up for the whole year in advance, this is the deal going on right now, if you sign up for the whole year in advance and you pay in advance, it comes out to being $16.50 a month. I think it's $199, and so it's like 16 something per month is what it would come out to. So it's very reasonable, and they have all these videos that you can do online at home, you know, right there in your living room, and so that's what I have been doing, and I really like exercising at home. It's, sometimes I need some accountability to kind of, you know, get myself going with it, but um, but I, but I really do like it, and it's very reasonable price. So what I really liked about doing bar at the same time I was losing weight is here I was in my mid fifties, and you know I just knew that I was going to have to get some muscle tone, or as I lost weight, you know I was you know I was starting to see that I was kind of getting some saggy skin and everything, and so so. As I got stronger and stronger doing bar, I noticed that that was uh, changing. And so, so, so that was part of what I did. I worked out during that first year when I lost, so I lost 40 pounds during that year, but I'll tell you, this video says how I lost 30 pounds. I'm gonna tell you what happened with that last 10. So uh, during that year, I was working out quite a lot, like four to five days a week. Now. I work out three, you know, about three days a week. And so, uh, but it, it was a lot, it was quite a bit more during that year. So at the end of that year, I had lost 40 pounds and I was excited about it, but I looked at myself in the mirror and I remember one day I held up my arm. I was wearing like a short sleeve or, or a sleeveless dress and I just noticed like this crepey, hangy skin on my arms that horrified me. And I was noticing the same thing on my stomach and my face looked kind of drawn. And I thought, you know what? This weight may have, may have been fine for me in my 20s, but it it isn't working now. I mean, there are some benefits to having fat. It fills up wrinkles and it keeps, you know, from saggy skin and all that. So I decided that I would take six months I think it was somewhere between four and six months to gain that ten to, to gain ten pounds back because when I was at the thirty pound weight loss mark, I thought I looked pretty good. So I didn't want to just eat a bunch of ice cream to gain it back, and so I started eating plant based foods that were more calorie dense, like nuts and avocado and things that had healthy fats in them, and and so I just started adding some more of those higher calorie plant-based foods into my diet and slowly over time I gained 10 pounds back and it, it wasn't like it just gained it all right back to my stomach. It seemed like it distributed fairly ev evenly around my body. 
So I was, uh, at my heaviest point, I was a size 14. I got down to a size six, um, a, kind of a loose size six when I had lost 40 pounds. But now my size, uh, I wear, I kind of go between a size six and a size eight. If I wear a size eight pants, I'm kind of hiking up the waist a little bit. Sometimes the butt looks baggy. If I'm wearing a size six, they fit very nice, but I would not want to like they can't get any, they really can't get any tighter. So I keep myself within this five pound range now. Uh, and if, and I can kind of tell by how my pants fit where I am in that range. So if my size eights are really kind of starting to fall down, I know I'm getting into the, the lower end. And if my size sixes are feeling a little uncomfortable, I know I'm bumping up on the higher end of that five pound range. And so, that's kind of what I've been doing. I used to weigh myself every day and now I weigh myself maybe once every two weeks. My clothes kind of indicate where I am with that, but I check every so often. And I just have been continuing to eat a plant-based diet. Let me emphasize the word based. Plant-based, not plant only. So some people who are plant-based are really vegan and they don't eat animal protein at all. Nothing that's made of an animal or anything that comes from an animal. And so, but the idea of plant-based is, I, I mean, I hang on to that because I am gonna have meat once a week and I am going to garnish things with cheese. So, uh, but you know, people, you have to kind of decide what works for you and what I could live with was this, you know, having meat once a week and having cheese sporadically was something that I felt like I could live with for the rest of my life. Um, the thing about a plant-based diet, and let me talk about that really quickly, plant-based as opposed to vegan. Plant-based is about flooding your body with nutrition. And so you want to eat nutritious, I, well, nutritious vegetables, you might say, well, aren't they all nutritious? But iceberg lettuce doesn't have hardly any nutrients in it at all, but romaine actually really does. has nutrients that are a lot like spinach that has. And so, so it's really about flooding your system with lots of really great nutritious food, whereas vegan just means not eating something made of or from an animal. So let me just, there's junk food, vegan. I mean, there's vegan junk food, like Oreos are vegan. Yeah, Pop-Tarts that have no icing on them are vegan. Um, Pillsbury Crescent Rolls are vegan. There's no animal pro uh, protein in those. Um, but are they the healthiest things to have? Probably not. And so, so it, that's kind of the difference between being vegan and being plant-based is really about the, the nutrients that are in your food. So I can't remember what I was talking about before, but hopefully I didn't get too far off topic with that. But I, um, but that's kind of what I decided to do was eat the same way that they recommended that we eat in this study, but that I added in some cheese and I still have my, my meat one day a week. And so, um, so before you just say, okay, fine, I'm just going to run off and do that. Let me just say that there's some important things to remember. And then I'm going to go into the details about, about how I ate and tell you where you can find this uh, list of, of foods. But there are a couple of really important things. You have to make sure when you're eating a plant-based diet that you are getting enough protein. So I'm gonna provide for you a little thing that you can calculate for to know how much your body uh, needs in terms of the number of grams of protein. It's different for everybody based, based on how tall you are, how much you weigh, um, so, so you can calculate that. The other thing that's really important to kind of track when you are eating plant-based is your iron intake because, you know, there's iron in a, a lot of meat. Red meat has quite a lot of, of um, iron in it. And so when you're eating plant-based, you can get enough iron, but you have to eat, make sure that you're eating foods that have that. So, so for example, garbanzo beans, a great source of plant-based protein and has a lot of iron. And so you need to kind of figure that out. And if you're, if you're menopausal or postmenopausal, you need less iron in your diet than if you are still having a period every month. You need more, um, quite a lot more. And so you just kind of have to figure that out. It's not something that I focus on every day now because I have a general sense for what I need to eat that is 
enough protein and enough iron, but you just want to, you know, kind of figure that out. The other thing too that I want to say, because I'm going to get into talking about the specifics of this, is that as they always say, with any new diet, you should talk to a doctor specifically if you have health concerns. Um, you need to just, just talk to a doctor about it and, um, and just, you know, find out if that is okay. Although I will tell you that um, research, there's a lot of research that shows that people who have autoimmune disorders, lupus, type two diabetes, um, and different immune disorders benefit from a plant-based diet. People with cardiac conditions, um, cancer, as I mentioned before, um, really can benefit from eating a plant-based diet or, or maybe shifting their diet so they're kind of having meat as a side dish and, and having plants as the bulk of what their diet is. So by increasing the number of plants that you eat, it is supposed to benefit your health in numerous ways. So <clears throat> I will provide some links to that too. So I'll tell you about that. Okay, so what did I, what, what do I eat? What do I eat? Okay, let me start by telling you what we were told to eat when I was on this, um, when I was participating in this study. So I have this chart here that I made up for you. And I have a link in the space below that will take you over to my blog, uh, on Busy Being Jen blog, and it will take you to this specific post where I will provide this for you. So you can just take a screenshot of that page and then print it out and have it on hand. But these are just some, some guidelines for this. And of course you need to kind of t tweak it for what works best for you and also what your doctor says. It starts out with having six servings of vegetables in a day six servings and a serving is a cup and a half of raw or a half a cup of cooked. And so just because raw vegetables have a lot more water in them. So, you know, if you cook it down, a lot of the water comes out. So there's less of that, but two of those six servings should be nutritious leafy greens. So remember not iceberg lettuce, romaine lettuce, spinach, kale, whatever. So two of your six vegetable servings should be leafy greens. Um, the next is three fruits in a day, and a fruit is one cup, I got my little cheat sheet here, uh, one and a half cups of fresh or frozen fruit, and if it's dried fruit, then you have a cup to a half a cup of dried fruit. Um, also, one to two servings of legumes, so that's like beans and lentils, you know, if you want to have tofu, I don't like tofu. I don't like the texture of tofu. But beans, not meaning like green beans, but black beans, pinto beans, garbanzo beans, or chickpeas as they're also called. Um, so any of those kinds of legumes. And then, uh, let's see, what else? Uh, one, oh, and, and one to two servings. A, a serving of, of legumes is one, is a half to one cup. So I don't know why that varies in there, but what you really need to do is figure out the number of grams of protein that your body requires based on your size, and then figure out the quantity of legumes that you need to eat in order to get the right amount of protein in your diet. Um, also, we were told to have one to one and a half servings of nuts or seeds. So sunflower seeds or chia seeds, um, any kind of nuts, and so, uh, a serving of that is an ounce, which is like about two tablespoons. So anywhere between two and three tablespoons of nuts or seeds in a day. Um, and then we were also supposed to have one to two servings of whole grains. So whole grain bread, brown rice, quinoa would be in that category. Quinoa is actually a seed, but it counts as a carb, you know, because it's probably fairly starchy. Oh. And I will tell you that when I was participating in the study, I had more than one to two servings. I probably had more like seven or eight servings of, of the whole grains in a day just because I like it too much. And I still lost that weight by even having, um, having a lot of, of, um, whole grains. So those were the things that we were required to have. And then they had us have, um, four servings a week or less than of non-dairy fats and oils. So like no butter. So, you know, olive oil is fine and anything that is a plant-based oil. So four servings a week 
uh, a week, not a day, a week, and a serving was a tablespoon. This is another thing that I did not do during the time I lost weight. I figured if I was giving up cheese, that was enough. And so if I want to put a tablespoon of oil in my salad dressing, then dang it, I'm going to do that. So uh, there are a lot of good dressings that you can make that don't have oil in them, but that's just something that I have chosen not to eliminate from my diet. And then finally, one serving of animal protein a week, and that's a serving. It's not like a cheat day where you can just throw caution to the wind and eat whatever you want for a day. This was one serving, so one egg, uh, four ounces of ground beef or whatever, but but you know one one serving and four ounces is what they say is um, a serving of meat. So I wonder if that would be true of eggs, you know, because I know egg is probably more than or less than four ounces. I don't know, I don't know, but anyway. So uh, what I so I followed that pretty good during that first year when I lost the weight and then. Uh, now, what I do is I make sure that I have all of these things in a day, but sometimes, but I will have, like if I'm going to have barbecue, I don't measure out four ounces. I just figure I'm having a barbecue sandwich. I'm going to have a pulled pork sandwich and that's what I'm having. And uh, so I don't really worry about whether it's more than four ounces. In most cases, it probably is. And um, I don't, like I said, I, I add a little bit of cheese here and there. I don't get a hunk of cheese as a snack like I used to. So I do eat the six servings of vegetables, the three servings of fruit. The, usually I err on the side of two servings of legumes, the nuts and seeds, the whole grains. And, um, and so I do that the way I'm supposed to actually, no, I have more whole grains than I, than this would say. And I have oil. I just try to minimize how much oil that I will use. And, um, and I have on that one meal when I'm having animal protein, I have however much of it I want. So that has actually worked out really well in maintaining my weight over the past year. You know, I, so it's been since I, slowly put back on that 10 pounds, um, I have maintained that 30 pound weight loss for the last six months. And I, you know, I, this is a way of eating that I can live with. I can do this. And so I feel really good about it. My, I haven't fluctuated. I mean, with outside of that five pound um, a range that I've given myself, and my, I'm wearing the same clothes that I, that I was from a couple of years ago when I finished losing weight. And, and so, um, yeah, it's just, it's a way I never thought I could ever eat, but it is a way of eating that I can live with. I enjoy the food. Here's one thing I will tell you. Don't try to take foods. Well, you know what, before this, some of you may not want to hear this and you want, you just want to get the info and go. Like I said, this is linked to the, it's in a blog post and it's linked in the space below. And so read the recommendations at the bottom too. And also on the blog post, click on the links that take you to articles and resources. There's some really great recipes that you can get from a website called Oh She Glows. And but what I wanted to say was that if you're gonna try doing this, don't try to make fake versions of the things you love. Like if you want, if you love um, pizza and you want to find some imitation, like, you know, vegan cheese, I've never found a vegan cheese that I've liked or that tastes like cheese. So when I want to have pizza, I just have pizza. I have that for my one, one day a week or one thing a week that I have. Um, if you try to make a you know, like say your favorite thing is this lasagna and you try to put all of these vegan things in there um, and then you end up biting into it, expecting to taste that wonderful lasagna that you love so much and it doesn't taste like that and that is going to be disappointing. So what I say is cook new things and in fact in that blog post, go over to the Oh She Glows website and click on the tab at the top that says recipes. She has so many amazing plant-based recipes and you can, you know, just find new things that you love. And then that one thing that you really love so much, have it, 
have it on that one day a week for that one meal. And so it really is a doable thing. And um, I have just found that this is a way of eating that works so well for me. I keep thinking of all these things I want to tell you about. So I don't know. Um, I'm not going to do it in this video and stretch this out longer. But if you guys want to know more about plant-based eating or more specifically more about foods and different ways to prepare things or whatever related to plant-based, let me know. And um, I could do some more of those videos on this channel if that is of interest to you. But anyway, thanks so much for watching. I hope this was helpful to you, you guys. Uh, I just know for me that this just ended my struggle. Oh, let me say one more thing. When you eat a plant-based diet, you don't have to count calories. You don't have to be hungry and you don't have to feel deprived. When you're hungry, eat. You can have more fruit. You can have more vegetables. You can have more legumes. Just eat. You should fill your stomach. You should not go hungry when you eat this way. And like I said, I lost weight and I've been able to keep it off. So um, this may be something that works for you. Maybe it's not, but maybe it's something that would work for you. Again, I just want to reiterate, check with your doctor before you start a new diet program, especially if you have health concerns and um, just get some feedback from a doctor about that. But um, thanks so much for watching you guys. Check the link that will take you over to the blog post in the space below and you can get this little thing right there. I hope I will see you again on Busy Being Jen. So if you're not a subscriber, hit the subscribe button. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching you guys. Bye-bye.